Good afternoon, everybody. I didn't know I was going to make it. Uh, I, I was not in the country. I landed last night. I was worried that I was going to sleep off and forget. But thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for this event. I have a small PowerPoint, and I'm going to hope that I can keep up with what I have there. Um, so I have a son. He's three-year-old now. Um, when he started to talk, one day he realized he could say no to everything I say and get away with it. So when I say, um, give me that, he says, um, no, I won't give you that. So he repeats what I say, just puts no. He figured this out you know, pretty fast. Um, come here. No, I'm not coming here. But his, his first language is not Yoruba, or at least we've tried. Um, it's not English, I mean, and uh, at least we've tried to make sure that he has Yoruba as his first language. And for those of you who know who live in Lagos, know how hard that is. That is, because everywhere you go, um, everybody speaks in English. Where you live, uh, you have neighbors from different parts of the country, and to be able to communicate with them, rather than make them learn our own language or try to learn theirs, we just choose English as a way to communicate. We used to have um, house helps from different parts of the, of the country, and some of them came from Kotonou as well. And there was this one we had, and we told her, because she spoke some Yoruba, and her English was terrible, but the Yoruba was way better because she has lived in Nigeria for a while. So we said, when you're speaking to this child, make sure you speak Yoruba. Or if you want to teach him anything in your own language, go ahead and do that. That is fine with us. But, of course, you know what happened. Um, every time she tries to speak to the child, she speaks in her type of English, which, you know, wasn't as competent as every other language she speaks. So what we have realized over time, um, at least I have noticed, is we always assume that little children, the first language or the easiest language they should speak is English, rather than their own language. And linguists have found out over time that learning more than one language actually helps your brain. And, you know, it helps your brain function in different ways. And not just even the scientific level, socially, it helps you better adapt to society and interact with different people. And those are, who have also done studies about second language acquisition have also found that actually mastering your own language very well even helps you better understand any other language you learn, including English. So, so I would speak Yoruba to my son, and my wife would speak English because she grew up in the US. And eventually my son started mixing both languages together. So um, I would speak Yoruba to him. Any other low way? go and take a shower. And then he says, I don't want to lower. <laughs> and um, I say, Fumi. He says, I don't want to Fumi. And then one day I was eating corn, and of course I taught him a couple of words, and he figured out that uh, corn was Agbado. And he says, Baba, give me Agbado. And the people around me were laughing, like, oh, number one, how did he know what that means? And it's so interesting how he combines both of them. And I've been wondering over time why um, when children go to school, what you find is that the capability they have as children as time goes on. So you go to school, um, children who are able to speak their own language from home, um, they go to school and then the school teaches them that English is the only language that matters and your own language is not, is not useful. So, um, so at, each, at the end of secondary school, they go out thinking that they have learned how to speak English. To start with, they haven't because the English we speak in Nigeria um, is totally different and also most times doesn't say, would have realized when you're asked to take test of English as a foreign language. As a foreign language. So, what, do you, what does that tell you? It tells you that no matter how hard you try, no matter how, how hard you've told yourself you have learned English, somebody out there is still telling you that you speak it as a foreign language. And that means that the only language you actually speak as your language is the one your parents or your culture or the people speak. So, I wanted to title this speech, um, Kick the English Out. So I had this idea about, let's drop English language totally as a compulsory subject in Nigerian, university, in Nigerian secondary school and make it an optional language. So, the only language that should be compulsory is your own language, no matter what that is. We'll need funds to make that happen, but we have enough money. Somebody found 50 million in the flat in, in the 
in a way. The point is, um, the only language we have, the culture we have, which is valuable to us, is the one that we have and we always had. English language came here, it's a good thing, it helps facilitate conversations um, with other people from all over the world and other people within Nigeria, that is fine. We will learn it eventually. But making it compulsory, what it does is, first of all, it limits access for many people who don't speak it competently or who don't speak it according to the syllabus we have set up um, to go to the university. So every year, I think uh, 2015, we had about 40% uh, or so, I can't remember the statistics, a very huge and hugely embarrassing statistic of the number of people who are not allowed to go to university because they don't have a credit in English. That's a shame because Nigeria has over 500 languages and many, many of these people speak those languages competently. So you tell them that they can't proceed to university even though they know everything else they need to know. You're going to study medicine or accounting or engineering or a Greek. What does knowing the grammatical name and function, how does that help you better be an engineer or better be uh, an a Greek engineer, uh, engineer? Or be, you know, be anything, you know? So I've looked at the syllabus of English. I used to teach English, so I have an idea about this. And this has bothered me for a long time. The syllabus we set up in English has so limited um, the capabilities of students. I, I have a few of um, examples of, of what you find in WAIC uh, English, for instance. And let me even give you another example of um, the kind of things we are taught in school and we have to pass before we get out. If you could scroll to the, um, the examples of English language uh, tests in school, I would just scroll down. Scroll down a little bit. Yes, yeah, stop here. This is typically one of the things you find in English. Um, option A to E, choose the one that best contains the sounds given. Not only is this not relevant to most of the things we eventually do in life, it actually also um, gives a wrong impression of how the language works. So, India, for instance, we have English spoken there, we have English spoken in the Philippines, we have uh, Australian English, American English. Most of this English have been standardized and have been accepted as variations of English. Nigerian English we also have, and we speak, because many people disagree, ask, what is Nigerian English? Are you talking about pidgin? No, no, I'm talking about pidgin. When you say youth copper, it's a Nigerian English word. It doesn't exist anywhere else. When you say trafficate, check your dictionary, you will not find it there. But a Nigerian knows what it means. That's a Nigerian English word. There are different other ways we speak in terms of accents and pronunciation, which are peculiar to us, which we have, we have used without knowing it. But when they point it out to us as authentic versions of English, um, then we see it. So, there are plenty of work that needs to be done uh, for linguists, for educational uh, planners, etc., to standardize the form and make it work for us. Now, in English language syllabus today, you will be asked to tell what the sound of this means, and this is supposed to be, um, I think, son. Most Nigerians will say son. We say son, and this is not the sound. Um, this is supposed to be what? Um, Wanted, right? Nobody I know says wanted. We say wanted. Now, when you teach this in class, students giggle for the first time. Wanted. The class is the only place where you hear people say this. So why don't we teach them exactly how we speak and teach them a way to be able to use that to communicate and better understand themselves. That way, less people will fail English every year. And it also shows that the different forms that are, are acceptable to us are there for us to be able to use to communicate with each other. So, let me round off. Uh, I don't want to take much of your time. My, my work focuses on, uh, I'm a linguist, most uh, on digitizing language and making all the language uh, we have in Nigeria work uh, for us. So, Siri, for instance, which many of us use, exists in American English, it exists in Finnish, which is spoken by about 5 million people. It exists in Norwegian, spoken by about 6 million people, and Swedish as well. Yoruba is spoken by 30 million people. Igbo is spoken by maybe 20 or 25 million people. Also, is spoken by you know, 50 million people or so around the world. Siri doesn't exist in those languages. Why? Because people who make those decisions um, decide that this is not important. So it's not about size. Because, you know, again, we, we have people who speak these languages around the world. So, Let's change the way we look at our own selves. Um, how many of you use GPSs? You realize when you're going uh, to a place you don't know, the GPS says, 
Awolowo Road, or it says um, Ikoi, or, you know, etc. Those are things that tell me that we haven't done enough by ourselves to make our languages relevant. And if we do that, um, do uh, create as many things as possible to show that our languages are, are valuable. And also, in ourselves, rethink many of the things that have been taught to us about the state of our language or the value they add to us as human beings. I think if we have a change of mind at the elementary individual level, as well as state and governmental level, I think there's so much possibility for us in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.